good morning everybody this is uh, Ninja aka Black coming at you on another tutorial video and it, it is morning it's, uh, it's like I have a real job 6 a.m. Uh, but today is going to be about the forest fires map this is going to be hopefully a little quicker than the, the previous ones uh, I'm not going to go super in depth I'm just going to go over some uh, fine points here like uh, you know, starting out with the the jobs that uh, certain locations have, um, build orders you should focus on, how to scout in a map that's laid out like this, and how to expand given your spot. So, hopefully, I, I think that uh, going over these key points here will help newer or inexperienced players or people that just aren't familiar with the map to understand what to do so that they don't end up screwing their team over. I've noticed lately that uh, you know, e even players that have been playing for a while, and just, they don't get, often get a chance to play the Forest Fires map, which is, you know, it's um, for sure the second most popular map in this game's history uh, among professional or just skilled players in general. So, it gets played a lot, but, you know, a lot of times people that are kind of like average or, you know, mid-level players that don't always get a chance to play because they spend a lot of time spectating, uh, come on a map like this and then they get in the key spot and end up screwing up because they just, uh, you know, they're not used to it. So, let's uh, get in. I'm going to start uh, just kind of giving an overview of the map here. I have a uh, preset myself up here with uh, a map hack and a money hack, so we're good to go. Uh, first of all, this is uh, a modified version of the map. Um, Humble and myself have uh, we spent some time about a year ago going over the imbalances of this map and editing them to make it so that both sides are fair, both sides have the same advantages, and er everything is equal. So we adjusted the Tiberium in some locations to equal the same amount in other locations. We adjusted Expand to be equal, and um, a few other minor things. Uh, one thing that uh, older players might recognize is uh, this little indention we made in top middle. You know, the the reason for that is is top left has the ability to build all the way over here, Sorry. drop an EMP, and be in range. But on the original version, this cliff ended around here somewhere, which uh, would prevent top middle from having the same advantage over top left. So we added this so that uh, in a stalemate game, top middle could do the same thing, drop an EMP right here and fire it in this area right here. Uh, we moved the Tiberium patches to places that make more sense so that um, the harvester pathing automatically goes to the correct path uh, when, in, when your main patch is dry. So for the original version of Forest Fires, top left Tiberium is down in this area and middle left Tiberium is over in this area. So what that caused to happen was when your patch ran dry here if you if you're engaged over here somewhere not paying attention or just uh, busy attacking or helping your allies or whatever and your patch ran dry all of your harvesters are going to start taking this ridiculously long path to start eating this Tiberium here instead of going to this and this patch here uh, additionally, we added some more tr uh, trees. Uh, this tree's not stock. This one's not. Uh, this one's not. I'm not sure if that one is. Um, probably not, but um, I believe this is green, but we changed this to blue to equal the large patch of blue the top right gets. Uh, we did add an additional tree here, here, um, and here. So there, there's more money on the map, but uh, both sides have the exact same amount. 
Uh, additionally, we changed uh, the size of this opening gap here so that uh, it was originally somewhere around here, but that gives uh, the middle left spot a lot less traveling that they had to do to reach their expand. And it's also been modified that the spawn point for top middle's MCV is around right here which allows top left and top middle to both get to the bridge at the exact same time provided that they build their power plant and their barracks towards the bridge. So those are the, uh, the main differences. Uh, the map, um, you know, okay this right here is another difference. We added this bit of water here to give a smaller gap here for bottom right so that uh, they didn't have such a gigantic area to try to cover within the first few seconds of the game since uh, bottom middle does not have that to worry about. And finally we added uh, weeds on every single spot but I'm probably going to edit the map here in the near future to take the weeds out because I feel like it's an unfair advantage since GDI has no counter to the weeds since the um, the drop pods were never added into the game until Firestorm, but we don't use Firestorm. <coughs> Therefore uh, weeds are ha have no counter, have no equal on the GDI side and this map already favors Nod given the spots all having a bottleneck entrance with natural oh. barriers that can't be manipulated. So, um, jobs. A few spots in this map have particular jobs being uh, bottom middle and bottom right and top middle and top left and those jobs are preventing the um, and the uh, paths that are open between the two sides of the map to get scouts across. So top left has to, and you have no choice but to do this, it, it is your job on this map, which is a kind of a unique function on this map, having a, you know, people have, having no choice but to fight over a certain thing or putting their, their side of the map at a massive disadvantage. But you, you must um, send infantry to this bridge, and top middle must do the same thing in order to secure it. What most people do is uh, send disc throwers or rocket infantry in an attempt to blow it before anything can get past and not have to worry about it. But uh, occasionally you'll find somebody just try trying to dominate it with a full infantry rush. So that's kind of a, a risk you're going to have to take. So do you want to try to take your chances and just put a few ro uh, disc throwers or rocket infantry over here, or uh, or risk the, you know doing that's going to risk the off chance that the the bridge is going to not blow in time, which it's kind of random. There's there's no real way to predict how many shots it's going to take to blow the bridge. Sometimes it blows on the first and second shot, and sometimes it takes like a full minute. Um, I believe with the Veteran 1.5 patch, it was edited to break a little faster, particularly with rocket infantry. But we're going to remove that 1.5 patch since it's no longer being used in any other part of the game or any, any other maps. Uh, whenever I remove the the weeds, I'll remove all the veteran 1.5 stuff and kind of revert it back to the original settings. So anyway, yeah. So the top middle and top left are, must compete with one another over securing this bridge. How you want to go about doing that? It's up to you. I recommend sending a pretty good amount of light infantry just to make sure that they can't. Uh, bull rush their way through and then getting a couple um, disc throwers or rocket infantry behind it to take care of the bridge. Um, beyond that, maybe you want to choose to do a full 3-4 to 4 F infantry rush and try to push your way through. 
that's completely up to you. So for bottom middle and bottom right, you can see how close they are together. They fit in one screen for me. What they're going to be competing over is this cliff. This cliff can't be destroyed. So bottom middle and bottom right basically have no choice but to do a full infantry rush. Anything other than a full infantry rush and I mean you're playing a risk. And if you're a newer player or somebody with less experience, I, I highly recommend not taking risks and until your skill is more up to par and your experience is more adequate. Uh, I do recommend a 4 ref. I do not recommend go 5. Because if you go 5 refs, that's going to put you in a position to where you're not going to have any defense for a 1 to 2 ref fast tech attack. So def no matter what's going on, you need to stop at 4 refineries and get your war factory and start pumping defense and getting ready for the disruptors to start coming your way. Because it's uh, very common for these two spots to be the first one targeted, particularly for left, uh, right middle here, because it's another spot that's uh, extremely close to bottom middle. That is uh, one advantage that we could not figure out any way to take away. Uh, left middle here is you know, two to three times further away from bottom right as right middle is from bottom middle. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that makes bottom middle the hardest spot on the map in my opinion, because when uh, a very common strategy for these two spots is to do a, a fast tech, since they're under the least amount of pressure to get anything done, because they have no, they have no real responsibility. Top left's got the bridge, bottom left's the power spot, bottom middle's got the the cliff. That leaves them, you know, you know, they're they're wide open to do whatever they want. So you know, it's very common for these side spots to get some fast disruptors and fast tech attacks out. Uh, alternatively, it's very common for them to make an infantry rush and send them to send the infantry rush to bottom right or bottom middle and you know get a get a double inf going and try to get an advantage over that way or potentially repairing this middle bridge and trying to send them around the back. <clears throat> so. When you're bottom middle and bottom right, your job is essentially to secure this area here and start bunking. Uh, usually, what you're going to do is, you know, just uh, kind of very similar to the, the build order that I um, displayed on the GSO guide, except uh, four ref instead of five. So you need to get your EMP as soon as possible on either of these spots and you need to start getting your Titan production going. Because uh, EMP here and here is absolutely in range of these bases and uh, if once a stalemate occurs between these two spots the method of attack is going to be EMPing the bases while you rush in with Titans or have your allies sending in disruptors and whatever else they got to try and get the KO. Um, so scouting on this map, it's, it's uh, uh, unlike uh, terraces, unlike GSO, uh, you can't really use light infantry to scout the other parties on the because uh, there's because of these bottlenecks. There's no way to get through, provided that um, top middle, top left, and bottom middle and bottom right are doing their jobs correctly. So the methods of scouting is going to be jump jets, but also it's very popular to use a subterranean APC to and fill it up with like a five light infantry and just kind of you know work its way across the map. You can like like if somebody's nod and they open up this like one little spot here, they'll just pop the APC up run away, pop it up here, run away, pop it up here, run away. What the fuck? 
pop it up here, run away, pop it up here, release the light infantry, have the light infantry run across over to here, send the APC here, pop it up here, release the rest of the infantry, and have them start walking around. And uh, with GDI, they have the amphibious APC. which is excellent for scouting on this map as well as for scaring people into thinking you have engineers. So it's very common to uh, people to make a fast war and send these APCs out to cross the river and get into people's base like so. And if all else fails, you're going to have to rely on the cross scouting method, which is done with either an Orca Fighter or the Harpy for Nod. So it's uh, pretty safe to say that the, at least this area is going to be scouted since um, bottom right is not going to be able to get infantry right here fast enough to stop any cal scouts from getting through. They're gonna, the anti-scout is going to happen right around here unless bottom middle is slow for some reason. Um, if you, if all else fails and you can at least get uh, you know something to around right here, like if you send a jump jet over here, but uh, Sam size right here kills it. Yeah, so if you get your jump jet to at least right here, Orca fighter to right here, now you can start cross scouting bottom right. And it's uh, also likely that you'll have gotten a jump jet over in this area. And you can start cross scouting and doing the same thing at that point. Like so. And same thing for top right. You can uh, be pretty sure you're going to get a jump jet around this area here. If, even if it gets killed. Um, look at the SAM sites are going to be in this area. The SAM sites, at least, are going to be unscouted, and then once you have this area open and this area open, start cross-scouting. So this method works for every spot. Um, one additional strategy for top left is to use your subterranean APC and go around the back. The, this area is very rarely guarded in a top left base, so it's uh, extremely common for you to be able to take an APC, sneak it in back here. Uh, this applies to a hover MRLS also, and just uh, waltz into their base. <coughs> so cross scouting APC with a subterranean or amphibious scouting is um, pretty much the only methods that are going to work on a map like this that has these kind of natural barriers and these easy to defend bottlenecks because even if you get infantry on the other side of the map you still have a, a second bottleneck to get through and there's really that's, that's very rare that you can uh, just walk right into somebody's base with only one or two infantry. So, as far as build orders go, I don't recommend ever going past four refineries back to back on this map on any spot because the, the odds that somebody in, in uh, the, one of the power spots or one of the, the uh, middle spots here are going to one ref rush. And, and if they go a one ref tech attack and you build more than four refineries, you're going to end up with a disruptor in your base and you're not even going to have a war factory. So, definitely don't go past four refineries. I don't even really recommend going past three unless you're bottom right or bottom middle. There's not the same level of immediate threat on this map like there is on GSO or even terraces for the because there's there's no other than um, the four spots that have uh, bottleneck duties. There's no danger of middle left, bottom left, middle right, and top right of being infantry rushed. So when you're in zero danger of being infantry rushed. 
going more than three refineries is kind of you know wasting time, wasting an advantage, giving everybody a chance to bunk up. That doesn't mean get reckless and don't be safe, but you know you definitely sh need to start practicing getting your tech faster and getting attacks out faster on a map like this. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself with one or two disruptors, and your enemies are already going to have you know, multiple SAM sites, RPGs, and Titans, and you're just not going to be able to get anything. You know, that being said, that's a scenario that you might just find you're in if everybody's equal. Uh, or early disruptors made, or uh, you, early APCs, you might find just aren't going to cut it, and you need to just start going air units. The, uh, the most common uh, long game threat is air units on this map. People stacking bombers or banshees or sometimes even orca fighters. So air defense is a, a big priority in your long game defense. And it's also b beyond stacking a load of titans and trying to walk them through, but it's air units are pretty much your only attack. Especially if there's a GDI and you try to walk a load of Titans through, um, not only are they just going to get smashed on the bridge here, because the bridges are easily destroyable by like one or two bombers are guaranteed to take it out. If you try to be, if you're top right and you try to walk a load of Titans all the way from top right to anywhere else on the map. Like one bomber is going to have enough time to attack and reload, attack and reload, attack and reload, and pretty much destroy the entire rush before it gets anywhere. So ground units are really just not viable on this map. So get used to, so get get ready to use and defend air units. Now as for expanding. Uh, every spot has a specific uh, method of expanding that is Silence. most effective. And we, when we designed the map and or re-edited the map, we eliminated the temptation to expand in the wrong direction. Like, uh, for example, in the original forest fires, there was a patch of blue Tiberium right here. So often, bottom left would see players that would expand up here and try to get that money and then start going for this Tiberium up here which uh, in turn would leave nowhere for middle left to expand to. Uh, bottom middle would often expand over here and try to get this money and then be and if bottom right's expanding correctly to get this money over here then bottom left would have nothing to expand into. So the correct way to expand is for bottom left you're going to build towards the east like so so if you get a structure in this little corner right here now you can go up here and you can start building refineries and defenses in this area and start securing all this money on here. We'll do a little example in each spot. Some spots require Tiberium to be harvested in order to get to your expand. This is one of them. Before you expand, you're going to need to be cleared out this area here. So, we'll do that real quick. Same thing applies for middle right. You gotta expand a little bit. Or you gotta eat a little bit of Tiberium before you can get to access to your expand point. So, for your MCB is gonna be right here. You're gonna be harvesting all this. And then you need to get silos or whatever into this corner here and then you're free to start building up here. Now, 
for top left. Gonna be starting out in this area. Your MCV spawns around right here. Your expand is up here and up here. So your goal is to get through your forest and into this area and this area. Building refineries right here is not necessarily recommended. I would uh, do it if middle left is real strong and has good coverage of defense in this area. But if middle left is weak or non-existent in the three versus three, be careful placing expensive stuff right here because that makes it very vulnerable to stuff standing up on this cliff and shooting at it. But uh, the way to get out of here easily is to build either uh, silos or power plants, anything that's a four uh, grid unit structure, and go along the very bottom here. This prevents you from having to do any clearing out of the forest. So now you're out and you can start to, at the very least, placing stuff here. You can uh, keep going and start putting stuff here. And if you have time, um, clear out the forest here. Get a, get your titans or whatever and start uh, force firing the trees and give yourself some space to build. Yes. Top middle. Yes, Pretty clearly is going to expand down the here. Although, holy shit, within the last week or so, I saw a top middle trying to expand back into this shit. I forgot who did it, but it wasn't somebody who was a new player. Um, so anyway, all you have to do for top middle is get right and round into this area and drop yourself right into there. Now you can start building in all this area. Uh, obviously be wary of hover ML RLS attacks, uh, but be that as it may, you can't uh, avoid the advantage of having these two trees right here. You just got to deal with it. Top right is uh, surprisingly difficult to go the wrong way, although people do make a dedicated effort often to do so, but top right needs to go west and expand into this area here. So in order to do that, just get over here into this gray shit, which for whatever reason gives you an ability to go over close easier. So now you're free up here. Now middle right is a little more tricky, just because uh, similarly to middle left, you gotta clear out a little bit of Tiberium. Actually, you might not have to. Let's see if we can do it without it. We may have uh, cleared that spot here specifically, so didn't have to, but for middle right, your goal is to get up into this area here, and let's see if we can, yeah, now that I think of it, I think we took this little bit of Tiberium out there specifically for this purpose, but uh, anyway, this is your path into your expand. Bottom right. Bottom right, you don't really need to expand per se, but you're going up into this area here. Uh, often when I play bottom right, I just uh, build a couple refineries here, then uh, you know put some pavement in here to clean out this shit, that this green stuff that slows down your harvesters. But If you can't do that, you can either start trying to finagle your way through the woods, or I wonder if you even can. Yeah. So I think it's uh, easier to just to uh, clear the forest than to try to do this shit, trying to finagle around it, personally. 
but again, the uh, the links that some people go to to do weird expands is hilarious on this map. <clears throat> but uh, again, I, I recommend that you just kind of don't go too far out of your way on this spot. Uh, you don't want to make your base too big, especially since you're vulnerable to EMP. Uh, I would keep it to... Uh, I, I, what I do is, you know, you're going to have refineries around here when you're starting out. And all you want to do to expand is get some refineries right in this area instead of back here. And then just have them travel to this. It's just so close, it's not even really worth, worth building out to. You're better off using your time to uh, build up into middle right and help defend him than you are to try to build out over into here and just get a pointlessly large base. You're, you're so close to these patches. Um, I just make some pavement into this area. Building. That'll, that'll uh, reduce the travel time for your harvesters from getting slowed down in that green stuff and you should be good to go for bottom middle man I, I remember horror stories of bottom middles trying to expand back here so we intentionally fucked the terrain up so that it t to make that impossible which uh, forces bottom middle to, to correctly expand this way so, getting over this cliff here allows you to start uh, getting your refineries down into this area and taking advantage of these trees. Uh, another change we did make to this map was reduce this cliff from over here somewhere to here to reduce travel time to get defense and harvesters over there. But, um, you know, that's, uh, how you run this map, that's all you really need to know. Bottom middle takes advantage of these two trees, bottom left takes advantage of these two trees, middle left gets these two expand trees, top left gets these two, top middle gets these two, top right gets these two, middle right gets these two, and bottom right gets these two. You'd think that that's common sense and doesn't and pr pretty self-explanatory, but you know we're we're dealing with uh, an interesting crowd of people playing this game. So some people need a little bit of help, and this is what this video is for: clear up confusion and help making people make better decisions to be more productive and active and you know, get get more wins. Um, let's see if I covered all my bases here. Expanding, scouting, build orders, locations. Uh, as far as builders go, like I said, uh, it's very common to do a, a one ref when you're on these spots, often even here and here. But I, I don't recommend one refing when you're a, a newer or inexperienced player because you're just not going to be proficient at it. That doesn't mean you don't need to practice in order to become proficient at it, but, mm, you know, that's a debatable topic for me. You know, may, maybe practice doing that one ref on a different environment, definitely not when there's people counting on you. Maybe maybe practice it in like a one-on-one -on -one game so that if you fuck it up, uh, you're the only person that suffers any consequences for it. When, when other people are counting on you to play a part in a game, it is not really the time to start uh, practicing new things and you know trying out stuff for the first time. So. If, if you're a, a lesser experienced player, go safe. You know, uh, do, do the, do like a three ref, uh, and, you know, ref, ref, ref war. Get a harvester out of your war factory. 
Um, get a, a radar up, get, get a jump jet out, try and get some scouting done, get a SAM site, get a couple Titans, and then start going from there. Once you have uh, four harvesters, you're going to be able to, that, that's going to be able to support a decent amount of production. So four harvesters will allow you to get defense, or it'll allow you to complete any one thing. So, and that one thing could also be getting more harvesters and more refineries if you're not under any threat. Um, you know, one thing that to, is important on this map is practicing your awareness. I mean, you cannot just sit in your base and you know play you know Sim City building games. You you need to be paying attention, watching the other the enemy bases, uh, looking out for stuff. Uh, you know, when they when you when they have a disruptor or an APC, not only do you need to know it, but you need to let your allies know. So. One thing that's very important on these multiplayer scenarios is paying attention and giving out warnings to your mates and being ready for the attacks yourself. You don't want to get caught off guard. You don't want to be sitting here playing around and just, you know, I don't, I don't know what people do. Sometimes people never leave their base. If you watch their videos that they post online, they'll just, you know, the whole game, they'll just be sitting in their corner never checking on anything, never checking on their allies, never checking on the enemies. They'll just uh, build up an attack and then when they're ready to use it, they'll then they'll go and look for something to, to attack. And they'll often just be sitting here completely unprepared and you'll just see a disruptor fly into their base and they'll catch them completely off guard. Um, EMP is very useful on this map. Don't neglect EMP and don't neglect getting uh, multiple SAM sites. SAM sites and air defense is key because the only way to really get attacked is by a carry-all or bombers and banshees. Other than that, uh, APCs if you have a nod against you. So if you build more than three refineries, I feel, I feel like you're wasting time. Uh, to you know, should be getting your tech faster than that. If you build less than three, uh, you're you're running at a risk of getting killed by somebody who's an experienced player and making a fast tech attack. So, for for new inexperienced players, I mean, I, I would recommend if you aren't bottom middle, bottom right, you know, top middle, top left, and you have to get those bottlenecks taken care of. I, I would go th ref, 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 war, radar. Uh, first thing out of your war is going to be one harvester, and then the next thing out of your war is going to be four titans. And then before you make your tech, get at least one SAM in the center of your base. So once you have one SAM site and four titans, um, you're you're pretty secure not to get completely destroyed. You might lose a building if somebody decides to attack you, but with that amount of defense, it's not likely that you're going to get just completely annihilated as long as you're paying attention and controlling the defense. So once you have that, then you can uh, start keeping an eye out, for, see, what, see what's going on. Maybe somebody else in your team has somebody uh, struggling, and you might decide, oh, okay, well, I'm going to get some disruptors and try and finish this guy off or keep the pressure on him. Or maybe just go ahead and start stacking bombers. Um, you might decide to get a, a Mammoth MK2 and start using it to try and help your allies out that are getting attacked. Uh, it's very useful to have a, a MK on this map. And anytime you see somebody with an attack out, start following that attack with your MK. And wherever it lands, drop your MK there and help defend your allies. Beyond that, you know, just get big, secure your expand area. With uh, three trees, you're going to be pretty rich, even if there's no actual patch. Uh, and just bunk up, get your SAM sites, get some RPGs, uh, get spare MCV, spare war factory, and start stacking your air units. And start whittling people down. So. 
that's all I can think of. That's the uh, the basics of this map. Uh, best of luck to everybody out there. If you have any questions or need any clarification, feel free to ask. You can find me in game or leave a comment. Let's get out of here. Alt F4. And let's ignore enemy. Ignore someone. Alright. Till next time.